Hi everybody, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Welcome to Quilt and Corner. I'm so glad you took the time and wanted to sew with me today. I'm so excited because uh, it's uh, right before the holidays and my sewing room is buzzing. It's buzzing with small projects and I promised you guys last time that I'm going to share with you what I do with those cute little panels that we have. We have six of them. They're so adorable. They're log cabin on it. They're a uh, uh, little bit of eight point stars. We have our star upon stars, a little hexagons, some of my favorite blocks and a little bit of a trip around the world. So today's show is going to be all about those panels and what you can do with them. I am so excited about this and as I was getting my stuff done for the holidays, I keep pulling the panels and like, oh, I can do this with it, I can do that with it and I can't wait to share some of the ideas with you today. You know, before the holidays, during the holidays, I love smaller projects and you know, I would say all year long I like a smaller projects because sometimes I don't have a, a lot of time to sit down and put up on a big quilt. So to me, a smaller project, block of the month, are perfect to just sit down and relax and enjoy. And don't forget, if you're interested in a smaller project, we have a perfect block of the month for you guys this time. This is just a simple house block and uh, you will be getting two of them a month if you signed up for this block of the month it's so nice because all the pieces are completely pre-cut for you you will sew two blocks collect them and in 10 months you will have 20 blocks and a whole village just like this one that you can go ahead and enjoy it so i love blocks of the month because i can do a little bit by little bit just enough that gives me the satisfaction that i finished something but also not overwhelm me and with block of the month that it's pre-cut it's so nice you don't have to press you don't have to cut you just open the package sit down and make a cute little house and i love 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 that but let's get into our sewing but i noticed erin is uh giving me a cue guess what erin has a special surprise for you guys today and tomorrow we have a special on our coco blue and i do not want you to forget normally we do that on fridays during our live show but we have a special it's the deal of the week and it's only today and tomorrow on all our pre-cuts extra 10 percent off and then we have our fat quarter bundles fat eight bundles and charm packs layer cakes what are also perfect for smaller projects so i just want to remind you that and don't forget on our website you will also find matching orpho threads for coco blue they are just stunning you will love 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 them so we have boxes of them all on our website but especially i don't want to forget and let you know about the coco blue special and I think Erin got the idea to give you a little special because <clears throat> one of my, my first bags that I have made was for my Fat Quarter Bundle from Coco Blue. So you can make a bag, get, a yes, you can, a, get a, um, you can get a, a blue bundle, Coco Blue Bundle, and then get a beautiful, beautiful bag, uh, make the bag to match. Isn't that sweet? Look at how beautiful this looks. I love, love, love this. So this is what I'm going to focus today on. I'm going to show you how to make the bag. And um, this is so amazing because I'm going to show you, but I'm also get my bags done because I'm planning to back, pack some of my gifts in those bags with cute little tissue paper and something. So, oh, I can't wait, can't wait. So to make a bag, you need a panel. And like I showed you, you can grab any of the panels, okay? Once you get a panel, you can determine a size. I have trimmed mine to 14 inches width. This is the full length of the panel. Oh, sorry, this is the backing. This is the panel, okay? So I took a panel and I went ahead and I trim it down. I want my bag to be a little bit smaller. I'm making smaller bags because I want them for my uh, gifts and I want to fill them up really nice. 
so you can adjust the size if you want it you can use the full width of a panel but i trimmed it down nothing is going to go to waste i'm going to put this to the side but later on i'm going to show you something very special that i make with the leftovers so i have my panel i trimmed it down then i got another piece of fabric and you can use a fat quarter to cut this piece i cut it exact the same size this is going to be my lining and you can use any fabrics i love nice uh, fabrics like this where there is a little bit extra design to it and the light is so pretty this one has this little cross stitch on it and all that you're gonna do is now put the two right sides together just like this i'm gonna put them right sides together and very quickly i can go ahead without even pinning because they're sticking really nice together i'm gonna grab my chair if you need pin it i like to sit front of my sewing machine you know to get a good quarter inch seam allowance you have to remember to sit front of the needle of your sewing machine so don't sit sideways because then you're sewing it's not going to be nice and straight and i put my needle down to hold this end then i fix my other end to make sure that everything is matching up and i'm gonna go ahead and sew oh my gosh do i love sewing please let me know you do too so i'm just using a quarter inch seam allowance and i'm sewing the um, short ends so one side do you see so i sewed it right here now i'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side i'm gonna sew this side all right this is so much fun as soon as i finish sewing the sides uh, the tops and uh, this is gonna be the top of my bag I know you're gonna be like what she's sewing the top first yes 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 and yes okay i sewed my top then next thing that i'm going to do i'm gonna open this up just like this and now i'm gonna be matching this seam right here do you see i'm gonna match it perfectly and i'm gonna pin it in place okay i'm gonna pin it it's a little bit harder to pin because this fabric is a canvas so it's a heavier material but i love that it's heavier because i don't have to quilt i don't have to do anything to it it holds the shape and just wait i'm gonna show you some other products that you can make with it and you're gonna be like wow i'm doing the same thing so what i did is i pinned it right here then i'm gonna go ahead turn around and i pin it on this side i'm pushing my seam allowances towards my uh, lining towards that lining i'm gonna pin it here and i'm gonna need the thicker pins for this now what i'm going to do is the most important for me is that everything matches up so i'm gonna go ahead and start sewing from that point from that seam right there where i matched it I put it under my sewing, um, uh, sewing foot. I'm going to put my first stitch, make sure it went in. Again, I match the bottom and I'm sewing from the center out. Why do I do that? Why didn't I just start it here and sewed it? I tried it, but sometimes the fabric shift and I don't match perfectly. So I have learned my lesson to always start up from the point that matters to me, where the edge of my little bag is important to me i'm not perfect so i'm trying to help myself and do everything possible to look nice and i'm gonna sew all the way right there um i cut it now i'm gonna flip it to this side and i'm gonna slow down a little bit i'm gonna leave a little opening right here in my lining i'm gonna sew to here stop backstitch and i like to leave like a three inch opening you can do as big as you want it i like a three inch because later on, i'm gonna put my hand into it and pull my bag uh, right side up so that way all my edges are hidden inside and everything looks beautiful so don't get too fast don't get excited and i do that right away i start up again at that point right there where i had it before and i'm gonna sew towards the middle stop and i'm gonna back stitch this time okay because i want to lock the stitches so in case i put my hand and my hand is pulling the stitches it doesn't rip it for me i'm gonna start sewing go back 
just to lock it again and go all the way. Wonderful. All right. I did this side. Now let's go flip it and we're going to do this side. Oh, it's waiting for me. And again, I'm starting on a canvas side because the canvas side is important to me. I want my pen to be right side up and I'm going to set my foot down. I'm going to put the needle down, but I'm going to remove that pin. I don't want to have it in a way. And I have a really cute pin cushion that we have made it before. So all my pins can go right into it. So they're not wandering around my sewing room. You know, uh, last weekend I got to do something super special. My daughter Anna asked me to make her a dress for red carpet and I did that. That was so much fun. I made a dress for her. She went to the red carpet event for the Willy Wonka movie and um, when I was in her house I brought my sewing machine. I brought everything with me. I forgot my pincushion and I tell you what I missed my pincushion so much because I had to watch all my pins where they were going. When you have a nice pin cushion, you put your pins in it and you don't want to lose them around the house. All right, so right there, this side I'm going all the way. Only one side needs the opening. This side I'm going to go all the way, done. Okay, this was so much fun. So now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on each corner and I'm going to open my corners like this, okay? like this place it down i'm gonna center up that seam and i like to <coughs> open this seam i like to open this seam and remember i told you this canvas is so nice it creases very nice and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my ruler i'm going to go ahead and measure two inches so right there notice where my um where my point uh, my line for two inches is it hits right there and right there I have a, a four inch that tells me that I'm right there where I need to be to make a nice corner I had a beautiful pencil I'm gonna use this darker one so you guys can see it on uh, screen okay I have to be nice and even perfect all right and I'm just gonna draw it just to give myself an idea this is the base the four inch base because two plus two gives me four is really nice for fabric because fat quarters are usually like four inches when they're folded so this is gonna be perfect for me and I'm gonna move this to the side and I would have go ahead and mark all of them I'm gonna do just one right now because I want to go ahead and sew let me get a nice pin and pin it because I don't want anything to move so I'm gonna pin this in place super even one pin or you can do two on each side and all that I'm going to do is come up from this end and go ahead and stitch right on that drawn line do you see what I did I stitch on the drawn line and yes you can go and back stitch if you want it on a corner I went just all the way this is gonna work wonderful for me I'm not gonna put too much pressure on those corners but this is basically what you're going to do for every single corner to speed things up for you today because I have some other things that I want to show you and I'm not making one I'm making multiple bags so guys thank you thank you thank you so much for doing this quilt show with you this quilting corner because guess what plus I get to share with you all the things that I'm doing but also I get to get my stuff done I don't get much time for sewing and having fun so look at this I had all my corners two pins stitch you can see the drawn line I'm gonna pull this off and now it's either way you can go ahead and cut this off or you can leave it in there for a little bit more of like a base in the bottom okay so for this bag I left my corners for another bag that I'm gonna show you I cut it off because I didn't want it for this because it's like a I'm creating like a little storage I left those right there so notice on my lining I did the same thing I went draw a line I stitched it I opened the seam and now I'm gonna find that little hole oh it's right there let's see if I can 
fold the bag right side up for you guys and um, show you how cute it is. I'm gonna clip this thread because this thread is catching me. It was the thread when I was sewing, um, you know, leaving the opening and it was just hanging there and was catching my hand. Look what I'm doing. I'm just pulling it through this, this little hole. Be very gentle. Do you see how I'm holding my hand this way and trying to pull this? I don't want to rip it. And that's why you want it to backstitch. So that hole is just big enough that you can turn things inside out. And it's so funny because when I did Anna's dress, I did the whole top for her dress and I did the similar technique. I left a little opening in a side. I sewed front back, sewed the skirt to it, and I flipped it through the side because I didn't want any of my um, seams showing inside the dress uh, or outside of the dress, of course, but also inside the dress, it was important for me. Oh, this is so cute. So now I can put my finger right there through this bottom, make sure that the little triangle is sitting all the way in the bottom. And also I'm pushing all the corners. So I want my corners really nice. So my fingers is gonna go there. And as I'm doing this, you guys can ask questions. You can ask questions because- We do have a question. Yes. Um, we have a question about, um, do you have a needle size that you would recommend for the canvas panels? So I'm using uh, just a Macrotex needle, but I'm using a little bit thicker one. And also if you worry about the canvas panel and if you worry about, you know, breaking your needle, a G needle will work perfectly. So you can use that, but I'm using Macrotex needle, a thicker one. I usually do, um, you know, um, a nice nice size and I can check this and we can post that exactly which one I pull put it in but um, taking your time I think more important is watching not to sew over your pins when you are making those fun little project and look what I just did do you see what I did I have my lining everything it's matching and if you want it you can I just finger press look at the edges I just went and finger press them but you can go ahead and iron them and look at I'm now gonna pull the lining out I'm gonna fold those two edges this is that hole that I took everything turn everything right side up and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that hole close because I don't want it to be able to see and you could also do it by hand I'm doing it by machine just staying right on that edge let's go back lock it oh, and did I guys tell you that when I sew in the studio I love this sewing machine it is so so cute and so nice it works perfectly it only goes straight it doesn't have a zigzag but it is a working machine it's so nice so right there i just finished this cute little bag and now go ahead i can fill it up oh let's see what i can put into it i can get this in it and i can put this in it and look at this doesn't look so much better than anything else and guess what if i needed to i could have also slipped my threads into it i maybe would have pulled it a little bit higher fill it up so you can the fabric can peak i can go ahead add a little branch wait 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 coincidence i'm going to show you another project i have a cute little christmas branch i can go ahead pop that little christmas branch onto it and i could have a, a beautiful gift for a friend um michael are you showing this from the front yeah, yes from the front. so go and you guys were like what did she do with the leftovers any leftovers that you have you can go ahead and just take a piece of uh, felt or wool sew a little square around it and now okay. i'm ready set go hold on michael i have to show the girls exactly <laughs> how i'm going to present myself to my friends okay now i fit right in isn't it beautiful look at this how cute it is I and i love the presentation and actually we did just have a customer ask for the bags and this is great seeing it filled yeah but do you need to use any stabilizer on the panels specifically I did for this? 
I did not. I just went in, out, and just have a lining. I know like this is a, the canvas has a little polyester mix into it. It stays so nice. And guys, look at this. This is so cute. And you could fill it up with all different things. You could put little cutting board, this, that, all different stuff, whatever you wanted to do it. And you can make them smaller or bigger. It doesn't have to be the size I did. Look at how sweet this one is. Isn't it cute? And I'm going to turn my sewing machine so the light is not in your eyes. And look at this one. This one fits half yard cuts. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's amazing. But I can tell you are excited about all of those goodies. Oh, and now, if you have extra time, you could go ahead, grab some of those beautiful threads and add some a beautiful embroidered stitches or some crazy stitches wouldn't that be fun oh i think that would be so so much fun so this would be wonderful but you probably now have a bag but that's not enough you want something more you probably would like to make a christmas stockings yes i just did that i went in michael's drawer took one of his socks i took one of the panels i folded in half I laid a sock down on a panel. I drew it around the sock, stitched it, cut it, turn it right side up. Make sure you clip it, uh, nice clips right here on your seam. So when you turn, the curve gets nice. And now I'm ready to fill it up. And again, I can fill it up with all different sewing goodies from little scissors to uh, rulers to anything that I wanted to give it away for Christmas and uh, create a really nice little um, stocking like that. But I can tell that's not good enough for you guys. <laughs> you are all over this now and you want something bigger. So what about taking two of the panels? Look how sweet. Let me move this so you get to see better, okay? what about we take two panels and sew them together to a bag would you like to learn how to do that yes yes i'm hearing yes absolutely so maybe next week on our quilting corner we could make a, a really cute simple bag it's completely in line it's so much fun start with this and then we can add, grow onto those skills where we're gonna add the handles to it. And all that I did is I took two panels, I cut a little edge of each of the panel because I need it for my handles. Notice this one is made from stars and this one is made from the hexagons. And I used a half a yard for my lining and I used a really soft, nice linen for the lining. And what I'm planning to hand embroider a name for someone that I'm going to give it away. Shh, don't tell anybody, it's for Nazette. It's her birthday tomorrow. So she is going to be getting this cute little bag. She's one of our girls that cut your kids and she is incredible and I know she always look forward to something fun. But this is another fun project that I'm hoping to teach you guys. Now look at this one panel just one panel add a little backing and i did the envelope backing so what i did is two pieces row row stitch and just remember you want to stitch into it a little bit so it's not open if you want to you can add little clothing to it i'm just leaving as it is and now i can have this on my couch anytime even if oliver jumps or people are sitting crashing and stuff this is gonna look wonderful and it's gonna be a great pillow oh i can have a low pillow fight with michael yeah look at this isn't that fun so that's for today for our little pillows our little projects i hope you enjoyed it tell me which one is your favorite i love to hear from you guys i think this one is your favorite uh -huh. Yes, and, and uh, it looks like Virginia Humphreys is making them as gifts. I love that. And can you imagine, I don't want to suggest uh, uh, anything, but 
look at you can use them for wrapping for packing you can add a little string on the top if you want to close it but if you want a nice display and this person that gets it can use them over and over for all different things and i made mine nice and soft if you want them a little bit more stiffness definitely there is all different materials that you can put inside you can add quilting to it i went very easy did you see how quickly i was able to make one and the one that i have right here i just have to finish the corners and then turn it inside out and it's going to be a similar color to the one that it's sitting right there do we have any questions uh yes we did have another question from marlene she was wondering what size seam were you using to make the little basket? Uh, I just used, I have my machine set up on two, the length of the seam. So it's set up on two. When I uh, prepped uh, this uh, morning, when I was prepping the machine for the show, I noticed it was on 2.5 and I went a little bit closer with the stitches to be, you know, nice and uh, strong on my seams. And especially for my bag at home, I made that one. I made sure the stitches were nice and close because, and I uh, double stitched it right here on the top because I want it to look nice and be nice quality. This is really fun. Oh, she's gonna be so excited tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to give it away, such a lovely gift. This is gonna be fun. It is so cute. Um, we did have another question um, in regards to the panels. Mm -hmm. um, how many are we gonna see design-wise? Oh, we're going to have a lot of different designs. What I'm doing right now, I'm going through my antique quilts. Notice they are from our antique <coughs> quilts. So first we release them and because I want that vintage flavor. It breaks my heart to see people cutting up beautiful antique quilts and creating projects with them. I think we can do better. I, we don't need to cut up beautiful quilts to pieces to enjoy them in a little bags or little projects purses oh my gosh guys anybody that loves making bags and i'm gonna show you a little zipper bag this is just the beginning i want to show you a bunch of fun little projects throwing our quilting corners but uh, so first collection we're doing is all vintage uh panels but then we're gonna be doing uh, also the ones from my quilts like the quilts from our book uh the um a color wheel quilts so that is gonna be so much fun for my customers that like the brighter pieces and then i'm hoping i can also print some of your favorite uh, fabrics on some of them so that way you can use it as your lining or anything else this is canvas so it's much stronger really fun so let's see what we can do wow. sounds good and don't forget bring it home if you want to sign up now is the time to sign up for our block of the month we have uh, four different blocks of the month that we're going to announce to you this is the first one we then have an applique one we have snowflakes that are coming in and we have a sewing basket a special surprise block of the month and we will be announcing all of the block of the month in next uh, two weeks so that way you can choose and pick but this one for sure I would sign up because we have limited am amount of those and it's so fun to have the same block to make over and over and get really good in it you know some of our blocks of the month it's all different designs every month and that's fun and exciting because you're getting something new but doing the same block also makes you uh, successful because you're learning technique and really really making sure that you do a good job on that so this one to me one of my personal favorite and i can't wait to spend 10 months making those with you and enjoy it did you see marlene uh, she was she's asking for this the seam allowance oh oh Not seam this. allowance okay so for seam allowance i used a quarter inch so it wasn't um uh you know it wasn't too big normally in sewing you use three eighths of an inch but for this project i used a quarter inch i ran it right here to that line on my machine so uh that's the one i had but you can use actually any uh, seam allowance because 
if you are even then everything matches up both pieces front and the back lining and the outside is exact si same size all that you have to do stitch and if you want it you can top stitch around the edge to give a little bit more uh, stability so it doesn't turn over I didn't because I wanted like that round feel to it but you can do it if you want it you can add something to the edges a low trim there's so many fun variations and I can't wait to see what you guys do I love it and we have one final question today yes. and it's from Nan and she was wondering when does common bride quilt along start wonderful question so our common bright quilt alone starts in February remember guys we moved from January to February because so many of you have been voicing that holidays and you have travels and everything else coming up and you really wanted to join us in and we are also moving in January end of January we're moving from this studio to our new location that I'm so excited about it because it's going to open door for us to see each other and uh, give us all these wonderful things uh, ahead. So uh, the uh, quilt along starts in February. If you want a kit, now is the time to sign for it. All the kits are the same. They're beautiful. Sign up, get your kit. You're going to need a kit and you're going to need a pattern or you can use your own fabrics from your stash and just enjoy the customers that are part of our fabric club this is the time to pull all those gorgeous fabrics and have some fun with us so please please do that um, i'm i'm so excited for you guys common bride is going to be one of the most amazing quilts that we would do it this year but there are some few other things i'm getting ready your blocks of the month one of them the sewing baskets the oh all of them are incredible sewing baskets you've never seen the design so i'm hoping to surprise you with something new and exciting now uh, another thing that we're getting ready is our mystery quilts that we're gonna be doing so we have a lot of fun plans for next year but for now one quilting corner at a time and i am so thankful that you stopped by today to learn how to make a simple bag I hope to see you next week for some fun and exciting things. Let's add some handles to our simple bag and now we can go out to town and have some fun. Happy quilting. <laughs>